I believe that every one of you is here today for a purpose. I believe the people that were supposed to be here are here. Um, <clears throat> just as an aside, uh, I'm changing the name of the series that I'm doing from what's my job, what's your job, to what's my role, what's your role. Um, and then as a further aside, I'm not going to talk about that today. <laughs> <clears throat> You guys know what the difference is between being humble and being humiliated? Anybody? Yes. Now you have to explain why. Because humble, uh, you. Put up the things you don't like. Can you? Humiliated is your your put down by other people. Yeah, it's the direction, the starting place in the direction. Uh, to be humble is something that we apply ourselves to. Being humiliated is what others have applied to us. Um, I looked up humility and humble uh, according to Mr. Webster. Humility is freedom from pride or arrogance. To be humble is not proud or haughty, not arrogant or assertive, reflecting, expressing, or offered in the spirit of deference or submission. Okay. Now, we are called, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to Philippians chapter 2. Who are we supposed to model in our lives? Christ. Christ. Okay. Um, the passage I'm going to read is kind of a, a foundational lever uh, for what we should walk in and look like. Uh, starting in chapter 2, verse 1. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation, participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each one of you look not to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? Because he's connecting these two thoughts. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I want to I want to pull out a couple things here. Besides my water. <clears throat> this is what Paul is writing to the Philippians, which is actually considered <clears throat> one of the most unique epistles because all of the other epistles have some sort of rebuke or reproving and we don't see that in Philippians okay um, in verse 2 he says complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love being in full accord and of one mind okay keep your finger here we're going to flip over to uh, Ephesians chapter 4 go ahead and Get your start, running start there. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up in verse 1 of Ephesians 4. Paul writing to the Ephesians, he says, I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Okay, so, so Paul is setting the bar. This is, this is the challenge. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is over all and through all and in all but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of christ's gift now did you pick up on the uh repeated word going here one. Yes. One. <clears throat> this is a mystery that Paul talks about. You know, back in Philippians, uh, it said being of one. Here we find actually the one passage um, that, that Paul uses. And we are all part of one body. Everybody turn and look at Chris. Here's <laughs> me. Right through the hole. I'm just glad it wasn't me. So, one. One body. One mind. Now, does that mean we all uh, have to agree on everything? No, of course not. Um, I don't know if it's uh, normal or abnormal, but I always have multiple conversations going on in my head. And, and people ask me what I'm thinking of, well, which part do you want to know about? Uh, we do not have to agree on everything. Okay? But we do have to agree on some things. Okay? And that's called the essentials of our faith. What is required of us to be in the body of Christ? Now, um, understanding one mind, um, our brain directs our body where to go, or in some cases not, like Chris just showed us. Um, our brain uh, is, is what holds the things together. Now, mind is not the same word as brain. Okay? Mind here is more, more of a reflection of soul. Um, we're actually going to be spending some time in Ephesians next week just in the follow-up verses 
But we're called to uh, be humble and gentle. Hmm. We are called to be patient. And we are called to bear with one another in love. Okay. See, see, what Paul is setting up here, uh, and I don't know if he was consciously doing it or, or God just stuck it in there for us, but what, what Paul is doing is he's setting up how the body works. Okay, He's setting up those essential things to make the body work. He says, uh, <clears throat> we are to walk in a manner worthy of the calling that you've been called. How is that? He says, well, you are to be humble. You are to be gentle. You are to be patient. And you are to bear with one another in love. And then he kind of shifts a little bit. He says, what all this is for, that we would be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, we don't all agree. I, I doubt we all agree on any one thing. No, that's not true. We should all agree on several things. Okay. Um, Paul is establishing a guideline whereby we, as the body of Christ, should function. Now, we know that Paul also understands that each of us is called to a different role in the gifts that the Spirit has given us. Okay. Um, the whole point of the series that we're in is to help you and to help me to understand what our role is. Okay? Um, if all of us had the same role, if all of us had the same gift, we would probably not all be here today. We would probably be scattered all over in our own churches, leading them as God gave us to lead. Each role is necessary, though. Each role is necessary. Um, and we, we'll get into this a little bit later in Corinthians and in Romans where Paul lays out how the body is supposed to work. But Paul is giving us some guidelines here that, that we should be able to check. Yes, yes, yes. And I did okay until he started talking. Okay? I, I, was, I, was, man, I was ready to check them all. And then I paid attention to what he's saying. Um, humility... Freedom from pride or arrogance. Um, when I was a freshman in college, uh, I went to a Christian school, and at the end of the year, there were, um, the, it was called the Fruit of the Spirit Awards, and I was given uh, the Fruit of the Spirit of Humility. How am I supposed to pick that up? <laughs> what do I do? I put it on my wall? You know, then I'm no longer humble, and they take it away. That, that's one of those things that, you know, when they called my name, I just I ran through a whole bunch of different thoughts. I should just walk out. Um, humility, freedom from pride or arrogance. We all struggle with pride. It is an ongoing battle. It is insidious in that it continues. We, we think we get victory here, but it's already back over here working on this. And we take care of this one, then we've got to turn around and we've got to take care of this one. I think it's worse uh, for Americans because, you know, the entirety of our um, governance is based on you can't tell me what to do. Okay? the independent nature that I think came out of the, the, the revolution um, where we cast off nobility class. Okay, there are no nobles anymore. Uh, there's, there's no nobles and no peasants. We're all just noble peasants. Okay. Um, I think it's hard for us to submit ourselves to authority. Okay. I know none of you guys ever have this problem, but every time I'm driving down the road and I see a police car, what's the first thing I do? Put my foot on the brake. I don't know why, because I don't go over the speed limit very often. But, I, you know, there's a police guy. i got to be guilty of something. Um,
humility, and gentleness. Um, How do you hold a baby chick? There has to be some measure of pressure, otherwise the chick will fall out of your hands and there'll be out one chick. So there's got to be some measure of force exerted, but it has to be not beyond what the chick is capable of. Uh, anybody see of Mice and Men or read the book? Um, Oh, see, I had his name and now it's Lenny, gone. Lenny. Yeah, no, I was talking about the actor. Oh. Malkovich, John Malkovich. Yeah. Uh, Gary Sinise. Um, that movie, I think, is one of the best movies uh, that was taken from a book. They, they paralleled it very quickly. But <clears throat> Lenny had a problem. <clears throat> he was big, he was strong, and he couldn't, he couldn't adjust the weight and the, the, the strength of his grip. And through the movie, you see this, um, you know, he gets this and, and kills it, and then he gets that and kills it. His, his intent is never malicious. He just doesn't understand his own strength, okay? Um, I would encourage you, if you have the opportunity, read the book, um, and then after you've read the book, watch the movie. Um, <clears throat> gentleness. Gentleness is a choice to not exert your strength to full measure but in measure, okay? Um, we are not called to be weak. We are called, quite the opposite, to be strong, but to do so in a spirit of gentleness, okay? That's one of the things that, that I think we would all misunderstand because Jesus, as he walked among the people, he was very meek, okay? Now think about this for a moment. Um, Jesus was raised by a carpenter, and there is actually fairly good proof that he wasn't actually a carpenter, a, a, a worker with wood, but it probably means that he was a worker of stone, okay? Nazareth had a, a very um, thriving business of stonemasons. Now, whichever you did, he's using hand tools. You ever met somebody that uses hand tools their entire life? Don't shake their hand, okay? <laughs> give them an elbow bump or something because they will crush your hand. I'm not kidding. You know, I've, I've had people that just, you know, grab and I lose all feeling in my fingers, okay? We are called to strength but wrapped in gentleness, okay? Um, the leader of the band, I like the way he describes his father. He, he was a thundering velvet hand. I like that image. You know, you knew that dad was not going to put up with your nonsense, but any discipline that he gave you was wrapped up in his care and concern for you. Okay. So, uh, humility and gentleness, and then see, this is where I really start falling off. Patience. If anybody's got some of that, could I borrow it? <laughs> I don't, I'm not a very patient man. Um, I think that may be part of why God is putting me in places that I have to be patient. Okay, now this next one kind of throws us a curveball, being Americans. It says, bearing with one another in love. Okay, that doesn't mean you just tolerate one another. We bear one another in love. Again, I remember last week or two weeks ago we talked about love as the foundation of everything we should be doing. That if we ever get off of that foundation of love, our work is going to fail. Okay? Um, bearing one another in love. I think what Paul is saying here, uh, just like he says in, in Galatians, is that we need to be aware of where each of us is at. And when somebody stumbles, somebody's caught, somebody is, is not doing well, the body needs to rally around that person to encourage them and lift them up so they can get back on their feet. All right, carrying um, through the uh, illustration of the body needing every part. Um, 
I inherited a, a not a not a blessing, definitely a curse uh, from my father and, and his siblings uh, with what's called the Van Note temper. Okay. Um, my dad, <laughs> it, dad was doing a project in the garage. I don't know what it was. I just saw the effects of it. Um, he got upset and he picked up a hammer and he threw it through the wall. Now, on the outside, you could see the hole. On the inside, it was pretty big. Um, I don't know what he got upset with. It wasn't me, and I was counting my blessings. Um, next generation. Um, uh, the house we were renting, uh, the window in the, uh, we called it the add-on, because it was a, a trailer that they added on several different parts to over the years. Uh, but the laundry room, the mirror in the, or the window in there got messed up. It broke. And so uh, took the measurements, went down, got the pane of glass, pulled it out. And I went, oh, man, I forgot the glazier points. You know, those little things to, to hold the in place till you can. I hope you guys understand sign language. <laughs> um, until you can caulk it. Um, so we didn't want to have to drive all the way back down. To Hamilton uh, in our 77 uh, Ford LTD Country Squire station wagon <laughs> um, oh you laugh <laughs> that that vehicle gave me more reason to cuss and more reason to uh, practice patience um, Christy says, well, why don't we just use some of these little little taps, the little little tiny nails? Well, I don't I don't do little tiny very well. It's a running joke in our family that if I'm trying to put a nail in somewhere, I'm gonna probably miss it three times, it's gonna go flying over my head. Um, that's how gifted I am at uh, carpentry gymnastics. Um, but <clears throat> Christy said, well, let's do that. I, I, I'm thinking, okay, this isn't a good idea because I don't, I, I'm not very coordinated with a hammer. But I didn't want to go back to Hamilton, so okay, I'll try it. And I go, get the thing in there. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. and the glass went, <laughs> and I lost my temper. And as I'm griping and whining and being unpleasant, I turned around and looked, and there was Donovan and one of the neighbor boys from up the road. And wow, did I blow it. You see, we're, we're called to be a witness and a testimony in all things. And um, I blew that opportunity. Okay? Instead of being mature, I just reacted in my flesh. Um, we are called to be pe people of patience. And then he goes on and he says, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, there is one unity, but what does that look like? Okay, um, Because Jesus Community Church is a unity. We've all agreed to meet here, but are we all the same? That, that's a question. Okay, okay. Rhetorical question, yeah. Um, we are not the same, because we are not all called to do the same thing. But we are all called to do whatever it is that we are called to, to do it in love, with unity. Okay? Um, you know, you can, you can put up your bar graphs, your, your pie charts, and all of these other things, and, and, and describe it, and mark it, and, and present it. But really, it's a very, uh, very simple thing, is that we are grafted in to Jesus. Okay? And being grafted into the vine, we will all bear fruit of some kind. Some will bear greater fruit than others. Remember that we do this increasingly, not perfectly. Okay? And, and so check yourself. Look back to three months ago. Have I gained any ground on my temper? Or whatever your particular sin is. Have I, I made progress in, in eliminating that? Um, because we are called to peace, we are to be united 
of the Spirit. Now, the conundrum here is how do we apply that when each of us has a different perspective, a different call, a different role? How do we make this work? Any suggestions? Okay. The answer is here because it is only through the Spirit that this can happen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not really sure why, but um, my brother and I sound very similar on the phone. Not anymore because he's he uh, speaks very fast with a Texas drawl. And those two things should never be put together. <laughs> um, but we sound similar over the phone. And then as my, my boys grew up, evidently we have some kind of similarity in our voices. I don't understand it because in my head, I don't sound anything like what comes out of my mouth that you hear. Okay? Somebody records it and I go, wow, I, I should probably repent to the entire world. <laughs> um, <coughs> well, we used to play a game uh, where someone would call that knew us pretty well. We would talk to them for a second and hand the phone to somebody else. Oh. And, and we could get this going. And basically, what ruined it for us is we started laughing. <laughs> um, but we sound similar. Now, you look at Todd and I, my brother and I, we're, we're not alike. We, we really aren't. Um, there are commonalities because we grew up in the same household, but the things that he likes, I go, eh. the things that I like, he goes, no way, all right? Um, we all have similarities, but we're not all the same. You look at my children and me, um, wow. God has blessed me with some incredible children. And adding to that, he has blessed us with children that come in via marriage and he has blessed us come here i gotta show your blessing <laughs> you guys pray for him to be a preacher <laughs> god has blessed us with incredible grandchildren um, while we are of the same family, we're of very different personalities. Um, now, you guys all know Benjamin, right? Right? Stand up, Benj. <laughs> okay. Now, you know Benjamin. You know me. Mr. Free Spirit. Poster child for nerd. <laughs> um, he grew up in my house. And yet we're not very similar in the things that really define who we are. All right, go back to you. It is only through the Spirit. Oh, by the way, just as a caveat to him and I being very different, he is exactly like I was when I was little. Uh, bench. <laughs> Yeah, Benj. Um, yeah, my mom has some stories that probably go right along with Benjamin's going to bounce in the trampoline story. Um, if you haven't heard that one, talk to me later. <laughs> Without the Spirit, we can't accomplish any of this. We can't. Uh, we might be able to pull it off for a little while. So we might be able to strengthen one part of our life at the expense of another part of our life. But without the Spirit of God who indwells us, because see, there is one spirit that knits us together. Okay? One of the saddest things uh, that I see in church today is that there is no challenge for the congregation to step into their role. Or the probably worst challenge is to take somebody and put them in a spot because you need that spot filled. That leads more often than not to burnout frustration, to anxiety, to tension in the body of Christ. Now, all of us need to step back periodically. 
you look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, there were times where he separated himself out from everybody else. I hate the term me time. As believers, we are not called to me time. We are called to him time. Okay? I absolutely believe that you guys need to take time away from all the chaos that's going on in your life and get along with God. Okay? Uh, this morning, I was I finished my reading and I was gonna I typically go out and, and uh, sit in my spot on the deck and I pray and I open the door and the deck was soaked. Oh, it's an in day, God. But I started to shut the door and he caught me and he said, you need to come out and meet with me. I'm wearing jeans, the deck's wet. God, this is just going to be uncomfortable. He just kept pushing and nudging. Okay, fine. <laughs> and I'm not changing my pants to go to church. <laughs> and I went out and I sat and I waited. Now, one of the things that really helps me to kind of slow my mind down is to listen to all of the noise of nature. Hear the different birds singing. Hear crickets. Hear uh, dogs bark down the road. That helps me to settle my brain so that I can hear God. Okay. The biggest problem with us and hearing God is not Him. It's us. We get distracted too easily. Um, you know, and, and you know, especially if uh, your brains run a lot, it's really hard to be still. So I sat out there with Him, and He didn't say a gall darn thing. <laughs> I don't think it was about him talking to me. I think it was about me being obedient. You know, um, doing what your dad tells you to do, that's the normal thing. That's not the exception. That should be normal. When he calls us to do things, we should do it. We don't, you know, go looking for a pat on the back because we did it. We do it because God said do it. So, let's get back here. Um, through the Spirit, the bond of peace, and then he goes through the list of ones. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to the hope that belongs to your call. Uh, you know, Paul sometimes put these parenthetical statements that kind of take you to the edge and then leave you hanging. Um, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all things, through all things, and in all things. Okay? And then he wraps this section up by saying, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now that last verse is going to be the start of the, where we start uh, in talking about our roles. Okay? Um, so you might want to read from there down through the week. Um, we'll be getting into this hopefully next week. Now, I'm going to read a little bit out of Romans chapter 12. Um, verse 9 through 18, if you want to turn there. Uh, Romans 12, verses 9 through 18. Um, what is the foundation of everything that we do? Love. It should always be love. Hey, Satch, would you? Whoa. Would you bring water up, please? Um, let love be genuine. Okay. No posers. Don't, don't act one way in front of, uh, you know, we, we, we all have our, our church face, you know. You sit out in your car before you get out to come in and you practice. <laughs> it's a good day, you know. Um, our love has to be genuine. If you are struggling with your faith, your, your love being genuine, then I would recommend you step back and learn about his love for us. And even a little bit more difficult, his love for people we don't like. Because okay. Jesus went to the cross for everybody. Everybody. Okay? So, let love 
be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. And so often we get this backwards. Um, for example, uh, somebody offends you. Um, I, I have an incredible memory for people that have offended me. I can replay that thing over and over and over again. And that is holding to evil. Okay. Uh, I'm holding on to an offense. Um, but we are to hold fast to what is good. Well, what is good? Uh, remember the, the uh, rich young ruler, he called Jesus uh, good teacher, and Jesus responded, who is good except God? And, you know, uh, if you leave at that, you don't look at that in context with the rest of what's going on, uh, people go, okay, that, that means he's not God. No. I think he is professing right there that he is God. And his goodness is because he's God. Okay? Um, do uh, hold fast to what is good. Hold on to it. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Okay, I'm going to let you guys read this. There's just a couple things that I want to pull out, and then we're going to uh, we're going to end right here. Uh, outdo one another in showing honor. And then jumping down, uh, I don't have the verse written here, but uh, it says, um, "Never be wise." in your own sight. We all do it. We all get puffed up. Um, Christy, as an encourager, her job was to inflate my children's head so that they would, they would feel good about themselves. As an exhorter, my job was to let the hair out because life isn't like that. Okay. You, you go with the fat head and it ends, and it ends up being not good. Okay. Um, Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So there are a couple things that I want you to take away from this. First, we are called to be humble. If we will not humble ourselves willingly, God will humble us. Okay? And sometimes that comes with humiliation. Okay? Um, but the end purpose, the difference between that is God is humbling you to build you up. And if the humble that comes in is just humiliating you and there's no building up, that's not God. Okay? That's the devil. That's his lies coming to tell you that what is true is not true. Okay? So um, we need each other. All of this is built on the foundation of love. We are to prefer others above ourselves. We are to emulate the manner in which Christ came so that we would be servants, and not just servants, but they wash the feet. Okay? That's the example that has been set for us to accomplish what God has called us to do. If we can get our eyes off of our own selves and our struggles and our frustrations and our hurt, our lack of love. If we can get past that, take that thing and turn it around and start seeing other people's struggles. Start seeing other people uh, dealing with difficult situations. Um, I had a, a friend in college. Uh, he was a year behind me. Uh, the gal that he married was in the same class as my sister. Um, and we had just reconnected a month ago and he passed away and I was not even aware that he was sick uh, he had cancer and, and God took him home um, when, I mean we'd only been in touch for three or four days and Julie his wife um, posted that he had gone home I didn't know he was sick um, Guys, we are we are in a battle. Each and every one of us, regardless of how good your life looks right now, we 
we can choose to engage or we can sit on the benches but that's not going to save us it's not going to save us we are called to be fully armored for the fight we are called to uh, use the weapons of our warfare because they are mighty for tearing down strongholds we need to in the body here at jesus community church we have got to press in together okay we can't have parts of the body that serve no purpose okay you know what they call that in your body if that happens it's called cancer okay it's not a good thing um, we need to be understanding what our position in the body of christ is the body of christ universal and specifically here in this community we have to know what our role is and we have to get over this thing that we're entitled to anything okay as christians what we were entitled to was death separation from god forever okay that's what we were entitled to thank god for his grace in giving us something that we have no right to and his mercy in not giving us what we deserve okay we have to get over ourselves such that we can see where other people are hurting where other people can really need someone to step in and walk with them for a little while okay we have got to be looking outward because that's where our call is sending outward out into the field that are ripe under harvest and we need to go dennis i'm going to tell your secret here <laughs> He was thinking, which one? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dennis does an incredible job of being real with people, of being faithful to talk about Christ. Um, you ever get the opportunity, go to Taco Bell when Dennis is there with one of his friends and just watch how he interacts. You don't need to eat the food. Um, it blesses me that Dennis cares enough about people to share the gospel. Okay? If you're not sharing the gospel, you got to question whether or not you really believe it. Because this is the cure to cancer, folks. This is the cure to save people out of an eternity in hell. And it's your testimony. Nobody can take away what God did for you. They might try to excuse it. They might try to rationalize it. But you know what you were before, and you know what you are now. You can't take it away. Father, we thank you that you are building us into the body. Father, that you love us enough to give us each role to function within the body. Father, we thank you because we deserved death, and you gifted us free of charge, life. You did not make us suffer for our sins. But you drew us up in your lap. You pulled us close to your heart and you protect us. You teach us every day more and more, Father, that we would press in to know you more. Because, Father, we will never know you fully. Change us, Father, that we might reflect the glory of your Son to people around us. Give us boldness to bring your name up in conversation, to encourage other people around us. Father, so many times they are believers that have just tightened their lips because they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be thought as less than or, or kooky. Um, Father, help us to be brave in this. And Father, through the, the boldness that you give us, we, we might inspire others to boldness. Give us wisdom, Father. Because your word says if we lack it, all we need to do is ask. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus.